Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. RF ground. RF ground. How do you ground your station? Let's say you're new at HF and you're setting up your station for the first time and you look at the ARRL publications and they all show a station ground. The transmitter, transceiver, <laughs> I'm old. Connected to the back of the transceiver to a number uh, could be a quarter inch screw or something number 10 and there's a uh, round wire that goes down to a driven rod and you have to go outside and drive this rod. You have to pound this thing into the ground. That's absolutely a must. If you put up a dipole antenna, you have to have a ground. No, you don't. For, <laughs> for what reason? because it's an RF ground. Oh, okay, an RF ground. What's an RF ground? There's a lot of definitions of ground. Ground. Um, my feet maybe are in contact with the ground. If I touch this um, uh, XLR connector that's part of a microphone system, it's a ground. In fact, I wonder if it'll put a hum on it. Uh, me. Um, if I touch um, the metal desk, my metal desk, or the frame for it, is connected to a grounding system. Um, RF ground, it doesn't exist. Why would, if you had a dipole, why would current want to flow into the ground? What would it make the dipole radiate better? Let's say you've got an infed. So that's that's a tough one and for some folks that's all i can put up and i don't like that antenna but uh, a lot of guys disagree with me on that so you've got an infed and you've got it choked really good at the feed point so no rf is going down the coax almost impossible to get it that way but let's say you do um some say well you, you need an rf ground well okay for what purpose and what could it possibly do? Ground. We've got so we've got station grounds. We talked about that. Um, we will ground the station, but we're going to ground it in a different way. We're going to talk about that. We're going to actually bond it maybe. Um, AC ground, electrical ground, lightning ground. Not going to touch that one right now. Uh, that's a whole different discussion. It's it's a long, complicated one. Um, RF ground. Let's say we've got an AC ground and an RF ground. We might have a circuit ground. The circuit board might have a ground on it. The chassis for the transceiver, it has that ground connection. What kind of ground are we talking about? Unfortunately, they all sort of fit, and I wish that we didn't discuss things just simply as ground. In other words, if it's the circuit ground, let's call it the circuit ground. If it's a chassis ground, let's call it a chassis ground. If it's a ground for the station, let's call it a station ground. If it's an RF ground, let's not call it at all because it doesn't exist. There's no such thing. You're setting up your HF station. I know what it says about the number four wire, which is absolutely ridiculous because of skin effect. RF wants to flow on the surface of that conductor. That connect conductor, the number four, or number six, actually it's number six, is so small, even if you wanted it to conduct RF into the ground, it's probably not going to do it. Um, in preparation for this video, I, I reached up into a box that's in storage, and I pulled out some ground straps. And it, it's important to understand that these, we'll call these ground straps, maybe technically they're more bonding straps, but what am I trying to do? And this is discussion is also in response to an email I got where the guy says he's got a 4,000 square foot house, his station's on one side, the common point ground for the electrical system, the water, the television, whatever, the telephone, they're on the opposite side of the house. How does he run that number six wire over to there? Well, you don't. Your station is probably perfectly grounded, electrical ground, because it's plugged into an outlet. That outlet uh, probably has a ground connection. 
it has a neutral connection, often a white wire, and it has a hot leg, a black wire. So at the main electrical panel, the neutral and the ground are connected together and it's uh, tied to maybe an oofer ground. I watched a YouTube video and they called it the so-called oofer ground. It's not so-called, that was the guy's name, oofer. So, or maybe I'm saying it wrong, but oofer, oofer, in any case, his system is used in a lot of houses that I inspected. Um, there may be driven ground rods at the main panel. If, it's, if there needs to be another ground, there's a whole system of achieving that that gets really complicated and requires more rods to be driven. Maybe that they need to be 12 feet apart and connected in a sp specific way back to the station. Let's talk about what I believe to be important. First of all, there's no such thing as an RF ground. Second, for the better part of more than 30 years, and certainly here and other places, I have no connection to the elect to, to the uh, soil directly from my station. I do have a, <laughs> I do have an electrical ground. <clears throat> so what am I trying to do? sounds like double talk i've got a ground but i don't have a ground well i've got i've bonded all the boxes together so in preparation for this video i grabbed some ground strap my favorite one uh looks like this it's pipe strap it's got alternating holes there's a quarter inch hole and then a hole for uh, i think a number 10 screw and it's flat and wide and it makes a really good grounding conductor uh, you can get it sometimes it's called a uh, pipe strap in some cases uh, water heaters are strapped to the wall with that it's not a good way to do it but i also pulled out other kinds of uh, grounding conductors and I, it looks like i dropped maybe one um, this is a ground strap it's can be flattened out and it's maybe the equivalent of uh, number in. So let's say I want to connect all the boxes I have together. And that was another question I got was, why do I need another ground? I've got all these, I've got coax cable going to each of these boxes. Uh, you may. I hope you do. Uh, and you may not need any further ground, but you may. And this probably won't get you there. Again, this is a little bit like that number six wire in the uh, a ARRL publications and, and videos, which is not true. Um, let's take a look at another ground strap. And I, like I said, I think I dropped one on the way here. Um, okay, here's a ground strap that is um, in our measurement system uh, about three eighths of an inch, and it's um, it's a braid. Some guys don't like braid, but I do. Um, braid works fine. Uh, the problem also when you connect this end, I'll throw the floor. This end of it, um, you want to make sure you don't pinch it down. I try to keep this stuff flat all the way from beginning to end. So what am I trying to do with this? Why would I have this connected to um, the boxes that I have? The, amplifiers, the transceivers, the rest of it. Here's what I did use. Why? Because I had it. Would I go out and have bought it? No, I probably would have used uh, this pipe strap, pipe strap stuff with the alternating holes. Um, here's a um, sample of what I used for a ground strap. It's about an inch wide. It's braid. Again, some guys don't like braid. I kept it flat all the way. If I uh, connected it to something, I poked a hole in it, used some large uh, half inch washer, washers and uh, put it on the box. So what am I doing? What in the world I'm, am I talking about? If I don't believe in RF grounds, why am I doing this? Well, what I'm, oh, and here's another ground. This makes a great grounding conductor. I use this a lot. 
um, the, the grounding system for this desk and the other one is this. Uh, happens to be, this is half inch. Uh, this is um, uh, used for water piping. It's probably gotten to be real expensive. I used one inch. I used it because that's what I had. I would have used this or something similar to it and the pipe strap, this kind of stuff. So it'd be more plumbing than anything else. But I'm not running water. Is that an RF ground? No, because I don't believe in it. Um, what I'm trying to do is make sure that each of the boxes, and I don't daisy chain them, I don't connect one to the other, they're all connected individually to that kind of pipe. Why do I have that? Because I want them all to be at the same voltage. So if they're three volts above ground, they're all three volts above ground. I can do that because the resistance of that conductor to that copper pipe is damn close to zero. If I'd used a really skinny wire, then I might have one box at three volts, another one at five volts, another one at four volts, and I might have a ground loop or a noise or AC on the audio. Um, guy says, well, I've got RF on my audio. That probably is a different issue, but this will likely help. So each box in my station has, and if it doesn't have a screw set up to do it, I'll modify it so it does. I'll try to do it in a way that won't decrease its value, but I can still achieve it. Maybe um, in, on one transceiver, I use the SO239. There's a spot for one that uh, would connect to another device that I don't have. So that became my connection, that round SO239 for my ground strap. They connect to a rod pipe that in turn connects to the electrical panel to the common point ground through yet another pipe. So that they're all electrically at the same point. They all rise and fall with the same voltage. If I ran number six wire as recommended from each box and there was a long run up, maybe that this box has a different voltage on this one. So now I've got a difference in potential. Where's that AC going to want to go? It's going to go where it gets into my audio. It's just, it's going to happen every time. So RF ground, it doesn't exist. You're setting up your station, forget about it. Don't drive a rod. I believe that to be a violation of the National Electric Code because the code as I read it requires that all grounding conductors go back to the main panel common point ground. I said main panel. Maybe the main panel, it may be a, a, a sub panel, but likely at some point there's a common point ground and tele telephone, uh, television, gas used to be not so much anymore. Um, water lines used to be not so much anymore because they're mostly plastic, but that's a common point ground and that's connected to the electrical, electrical system. Your Electrical, your uh, stuff that you have in your station is likely has a perfect connection, likely has a good connection to the ground in the electrical panel. If you want to run a separate ground conductor, that's fine, but it needs to go back to that main panel. Do you need to do that? No, not likely. Could you run those uh, ground straps to that pipe and then that pipe connects there? to the electrical system? Yes. Would that be effective? Yes. Have I done that? Yes. Did I ever have an RF ground? No. When my station was on the second floor and I was running high power, trust me, um, I did not have uh, ground loops or noise in the audio because they had them all tied together. They all went up and down in terms of voltage at the same point, the same voltage. RF ground doesn't exist. AC ground, yeah, you want to make sure your station's grounded. Do not clip the ground connection on that plug. Keep them all on, but do do that system of grounding that I talk about where each box has a wide strap, could be the plumbing strap, could be that inch wide copper strap to some common point, and that's connected to the electrical system. 
We're not talking about lightning protection. We're talking about grounding your station. Do you need an RF ground? No, because it doesn't exist. It does not exist. There's so much misinformation. I watched a number of videos from the ARL and only from the ARRL because I don't watch other guys' videos. Um, and there was so much wrong. It was just amazing. There were there was um, discussions of electrical grounds mixed in with what they called an RF ground. There being ones being um, used in place of the other over and over and over again. Just didn't make any sense, and I can see why people would be confused. I hope this helps. Simple ideas. Ground your station to a common point using a wide strap. Make sure that's tied to the electrical system. There's no such thing as an RF ground. Driving a ground rod outside, going through the wall, connecting to a driven rod may actually be a safety hazard and a violation of the National Electric Code. I hope that helps. I'm Jim, W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. If you have a question, uh, post it below. If you have an answer, write, write it out. Answer that guy's question. Uh, nobody uh, knows it all, and we, we can all contribute here. I'm Jim, W6LG, 73 for now. Keep yourself well-grounded.